Hello, everybody. Welcome to IT Dogs November. I'm sorry, October. It's not even November yet. Uh, October's uh, webinar presentation. We've been trying to bring some uh, content to you uh, every week, uh, every month to bring value to the IT Doug uh, users group. Uh, for those of you who may be seeing us live and not inside of IT Doug, IT Doug stands for IT Documentation Users Group. Uh, and uh, we are a Facebook group with IT professionals just sharing our information about documentation, uh, how we document our lives, our assets, and our processes. We were founded back in May 2018 by Tracy, who also runs an MSP. She originally formatted this group to uh, co-learn IT Glue, uh, but we did quickly expand that to not only include myself as co-administrator and our, now our whole team at Eureka Process, but to all documentation platforms. And as you can see, we've been growing uh, a thousand members at a time. Uh, and so keep inviting because more brains is, is more brain power to help you solve your challenges and to provide additional tips and tricks. So for this month, uh, we're going to, uh, uh, about me, sorry, we, we keep finding cooler and cooler technology and we keep pushing cool buttons. Uh, so bear with us as we uh, try this new streaming format. Uh, so I'm an, an administrator of IT, Doug. Uh, I've been in IT since 1994. I've owned an MSP before, led a few others. Uh, and then I founded Eureka Process, which now runs this group uh, to help people uh, discover IT documentation and what it can do for their business. Uh, today, we do have a uh, special guest. Uh, Adam Edwards, he actually joined our team at Eureka Process just over uh, a year, year and a half ago now. Uh, welcome, Adam. <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> uh, I'm going to let you introduce yourself and our, our topic for today. Sure. Um, my name is Adam Edwards. I'm the uh, chief implementer at, here at Eureka Process. Um, I have been working on process development and doing process consulting with uh, a bunch of our clients, which was a lot of fun coming from one MSP and then working for multiple MSPs. I get to see how everybody does something very similar. Um, and it's, it's great to see how clients work in different sizes. Um, so that's lots of fun. Outstanding. And what are we talking about today? Uh, we're talking about continuous improvement, which might sound familiar because this is one of our core values. Um, and it's something that uh, I think uh, applies directly to documentation because we want to make everything better every time we touch it. Um, we do that with each other and a lot of uh, other things that we do in our business. But it, specifically for documentation, uh, every time we touch a document, we want to make it better, even if it can be just a little bit better. Yeah, starting with the end in mind, for example, I had an action item um, that I completed this morning to write a new SOP internally. I wrote it, I shared it with the team and, uh, and asked for feedback. Uh, actually, uh, even after that, I fixed something and then Adam, you immediately responded with some additional edits as well. <laughs> yes. Um, that's, that's been a, a great part of that is, uh, we'll share things and I'll go into this a little in detail a little bit later is we'll share, uh, things that we've done in, in, uh, IT glue. It's great to see that, that history. Uh, and then we'll go in and say, Hey, this looks good, or we can improve this, or I, I ran through this process and, uh, maybe we can improve this step here. Um, now, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Okay, and is today going to be focused on IT glue or other systems as well? Uh, it can, these concepts can be applied to any system. Um, today, I, I think my main focal point is about the people that are involved in your documentation. So um, it's not just uh, this system or that system or this specific asset or this SOP. It's everybody. And how do, how do we all work together to improve uh, our documentation uh, for the next person that looks at it. Even if it's me, when I look at it again, I want it to be better next time. How saying? Let's hear more. All right. Um, so I wanted to start with a uh, just definition of uh, continuous improvement. Um, th this is one of our core values, so I'll share that with you now. Um, our core value is that uh, growth is intentional. So we want to keep getting better uh, and doing better by enabling the same for our clients. We want all of our stakeholders uh, to grow uh, personally, financially, their confidence, uh, their knowledge, and their confidence. And that those last two parts are going to be key in the things we're talking about today is their knowledge and their confidence, because that's what you want to instill when you write good documentation. Um, 
this is all based off of, I, I think, a, a Japanese business philosophy called Kaizen, which is means change good. So it's just uh, we want to continually uh, improve our working processes. Um, in some industries, they use uh, something called incremental change. Um, but for, for, for us and, and for what we're going to be talking about today, we're talking about continuous improvement as a concept. Very good. Um, so our first section we're going to be talking about is um, writing documentation for people. Um, so what this means is that we uh, want this to like make sense uh, for the people that you're writing it for. Um, so our technical documentation uh, often starts with like some bulleted lists, some general troubleshooting. Um, and you read them and when I find a solution, I might want to post that uh, in that document to improve it. Um, so that's that's something that how it usually starts. Um, and we think once you find the solution, uh, you should include that. So we want it listed in like problem solution. So if I am working with a client and I find something that the, we had an original problem that we could identify, and this works from troubleshooting like uh, service tickets or you know, working on uh, solving a process. So we have a problem and then we want to get to a solution and then we have a process in between. Um, so that's what we're going to do is, is uh, identify what the problem was and what, what our solution was in that documentation. So um, that's, that's uh, how it usually starts. And then what we're going to do is uh, go to the next step on how to improve that. So the next one down is um, templatizing your documentation. So what we like to do is um, create a template for a specific piece of documentation once we've identified it, that it's necessary and it's a repeatable process that we're gonna do. We're gonna templatize this. So the next time someone fills it out, they have some like guidelines to follow. Um, so we have an SOP template for the templates that we write and put out on our website. So they all look the same every time. So what information do I need to plug in? I'm just going to go in and fill those out. Uh, the other beauty of a template as well is uh, uh, as you get familiar with your own template, your own processes, et cetera, uh, you can skip the parts you don't need because you know what uh, what is where uh, mm -hmm. and speeding up your process. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and that's, that's something that... Um, over time you accomplish and that goes in with uh whenever someone says i want to automate this um automation comes from having a good process in the first place like you said um so in it glue this might be applicable to like uh flexible assets or or um you know building a configuration the same way each time um once you go through and do a couple of those, you can apply those to all your clients, run through, and you can see them globally and see what information you do and do not have. Um, this was great in our case for an uh, uh, organization summary or a site summary for some of our clients. Um, whenever we brought on a new employee, it was really easy to show them, hey, this is information about our clients and here's where you find it. So we're, we're giving them the, the power to go find that documentation for themselves. Uh, very good. And, and I do want to remind our audience, we are live currently. So if you're seeing this right now and you have questions, comments, thoughts, uh, feel free to throw them in the comments. We will see those and try to address them as well. Um, so uh, I have a little uh, bonus tip here. And this last one is uh, knowing your audience. Um, we've run into this a couple of times when we were writing a document. Uh, we want to make sure we understand who we're writing to. Um, this it happens to us a lot when we're reviewing stuff for our website um, or if we're writing a process internally and we uh, have multiple members review it, we realize uh, we might not be writing to the correct audience and we want to make sure who we know who is going to be reading it. Um, yeah, the two fun stories. I've like a, We're working on the Eureka Process book internally here and I've written entire chapters of, of dozens of pages and then Adam will come back. It's like, yeah, who's reading this again? And I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> and I, I have to literally rewrite the thing because it makes a difference who your audience is. Mm -hmm. uh, and then a second example about knowing your audience is, as Adam mentioned, uh, we get so used to what we know uh, and how we do things individually when we're writing the SOP and for our own internal client onboarding SOP. I wrote it, I followed it, I, I continuously improved it every time I followed it. 
the time came, it's like, okay, we got to really test this. So Adam, you follow the process. And his response was, what the heck is this? Uh, <laughs> how do I even follow this? So he spent uh, a few client onboardings improving that process as well and uh, running it by me, getting information. It's like, okay, this is much better. We passed it on to Brooke. And she's like, I can't even begin. What the heck is this? Uh, so we had to keep going to that process to make it better and better until finally uh, the audience, the people who don't think the way we do, uh, had enough information to follow that through as we brought Sri on board to do some more work, more of our client onboardings. Uh, there was slightly less questions each time and we keep improving the process. <laughs> Exactly. That's kind of what kind of uh, reminded me of this. Um, keeping in mind, uh, like transitions or stopping points in a process, from, like when you need to hand something off to someone, or you have some prerequisite that you need, uh, make, make note of those so that doesn't trip up the next person when they're they're uh, starting that process as well. Um, this go even goes beyond to something I, I, I encountered earlier in the week. Um, I was working with one of our clients doing uh, project scoping, and they understood that they the person writing that that uh, process, it, it took them about 45 minutes to do a task, but it might take someone else who hasn't done that before like two hours to do that task. That's an understanding of this person has never seen this before and they're, they're um, gonna be doing it for the first time maybe or reviewing documentation that they haven't seen in a long time or something like that. So building in that time contingency there uh, was is, is really smart and something that I wanna apply going forward. Very good. Um, uh, our next one um, is uh, champions and committees. Um, so what we wanted to do is uh, kind of create a, uh, a, a culture of documentation. Um, we always want to be referring back to a process and say, this is how we do this. Um, so we want to document our repeatable processes, internal standards, and our technical stack just to make it easier for everybody to find things. And they know where it, it's stored, um, and you can keep referring back to it and, and improve it. it. It makes people feel connected to the process, uh, and they, they can know where to find things. They feel empowered. Um, so whenever uh, they have some type of question, the focal point will be, uh, the documentation. Have you looked at the documentation? What have you tried already? Uh, what process are you following? You're getting them back to the process, back to that document every time. Um, have you looked at this flexible asset type? It has a document that's tagged and that might be helpful. Check that out. Uh, you're, you're directing them back to the process, back to the documentation source. And then if it's not there and you need to add it, then we have it to do now. We can go and write that documentation or make sure that it's clear in that SOP uh, that, 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 that is needed. Um, okay. Okay. And you mentioned earlier too, that we, we write processes for people. Um, and it's uh, such a different task when you say to somebody, Hey, do it this way versus also getting people, uh, to participate in the improvement and, and creation of these processes, they become more invested. They want to follow them and they're more aware of them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's people said in school, you take notes, you remember better wasn't true for me. Um, but, you know, the, the process of writing helps you remember them as well. Uh, so that, that's more of that getting connected to the process that you mentioned. Um, yeah, exactly. So um, we, we do have a poll that we can reference um, if we want to do that now. Uh, it's going to be related to the next thing that we talk about. So we're just getting to that. So you can see that live data there. Um, this is going to be at swiftpolling.com. You'll go there and enter your number here at the bottom. There's also a QR code and you can text as well. The The code to enter is 14795 um, or you can text at 205-883-8760. And our question is, how often do you update your documentation? Is this once a year, once a month, once a week, uh, never? Um, and the, the last question is, uh, every time you touch it. <laughs> um, so uh, this is a, a live poll now. You can go in and enter on here. Uh, this poll was on our Facebook already, uh, but here you can see this poll. Um, and you can uh, enter how often you think you should update your documentation. Um, while that while those uh, results are coming in, I'm just going to refer back to, to the next point it is, is talking about um, our champions and committees, uh, like this whole topic is. Um, 
how often do we review this? Um, so we we like to do two different things uh, in relation to this poll. Um, when I was looking at this, uh, I'm, I'm sure that some documentation is updated uh, whenever they have a chance. Um, but I think in our, our model, our, we follow two different ways. Um, one of them being that we're going to meet on a regular basis as a team. Um, and that could, if that for us is weekly. So that would fall into the once a week category here. Um, the weekly update, we review anything that's changed. Ooh, okay, we got some every time I touch it. That's good. Um, that's going to be our next one. <laughs> um, so uh, our, our weekly meeting is uh, anything that's changed. And uh, IT Glue is great for this because you can see edit histories. And you can go back and look and see uh, things that are, have uh, actually been updated. Give the person who updated a chance to update the team. Or if somebody's uh, you don't have this meeting, they can always go in there and see that as well. Um, gives it uh, also gives the uh, team an opportunity to review it and talk about the structure of the documentation if it needs to be improved um, or if there's anything that they if it's something you want to apply to all clients and then uh, assign that workout. Right. So let's talk. Uh, let's talk some details here. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, uh, many uh, documentation platforms have some sort of activity trail log or workflows. We actually. Uh, uh, use both in our IT glue, but we have it send a update to our team's channel via email every time a document is created or updated. Uh, and during a weekly meeting, which is uh, actually called process review, we just scroll through that channel uh, for the first couple minutes of the meeting. And it says, hey, you know, Alan updated this document. Adam updated this document. Veronica did this document. And we ask the question, hey, when you see this, is that calls you to have a question like what changed or reminds you that I made a change and is it a significant enough change you would like to share that with the team? Uh, we do this on Fridays. I think last Friday uh, we, we've been allocating 15 minutes of our one hour meeting toward this uh, and we use the whole 15 minutes because we've been really refining our processes lately. Uh, and, and these are processes that we're updating continuously, but then we're reviewing them once a week and occasionally having a challenge. Like, Wait, Why'd you change that? Is this the best way? And we'll refine it right there on the spot. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's going to be our, our next bonus tip. So for anybody that said um, is uh, anybody that said uh, every, every time I touch it, uh, that is going to be the next one. Uh, many hands makes light work. Um, we want to empower our team. So uh, we like everybody to have the ability to edit the documentation and do it in real time. So um, like Alan was saying earlier, he posted something and immediately I was like, we need to fix this. <laughs> uh, there's something that we can make an edit to. Um, and it had been live on IT Glue for about a minute. Uh, so as Just soon as I, I can't spell. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to call you out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but um, I, I, I think this approach is better. And Alan, you've mentioned this before in in, in this meeting that that may not be popular to, to give everybody the power to do this. But uh, we think that empowering people uh, to to go in and make the change themselves makes them feel more connected to the documentation. And then they they are, you know, um, they uh, feel good that they can, are contributing to an end result of good do documentation. That's what we want is them to keep coming back to it and, and making it better. And there is a fear that there is a um, that somebody is going to get it wrong and that somebody else is going to blindly follow it wrongly. Um, I, I hope those people uh, that would make such egregious mistakes uh, aren't your people. Uh, there is also typically nothing wrong with making mistakes and getting things wrong. And, and hopefully your team's the type of team that will see that and go, hey, this is kind of weird. Let me let me question it. Um, uh, and of course, if you have this documentation review, you can see what changed and prove it yourself. Uh, maybe you don't have to have a stop, let me evaluate this. Maybe it can be a let me review as they're changing. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's our uh, bonus tip there for your takeaway. Uh, next, we're gonna talk about our goals. Um, so goals are a part of uh, your documentation as well, especially part of the Eureka process. Um, we have a quarterly cadence and that's part of an annual cadence um, so your annual goals will influence your quarterly goals which will influence what you do week to week um, so our first step here is uh, measuring our success um, 
it it makes us feel like we're we are working towards something. We have something to measure. Um, and this graphic on, on the right here is is kind of uh, what it feels like uh, week to week as you're going in a circle. Uh, but what's actually happening is you're making progress because over time you're improving things every time. Uh, you you uh, are continually working on things week to week, uh, month to month, quarter to quarter, and throughout the year. And um, sometimes like I equate it to taking small steps. And it feels like no progress at all. You keep doing it anyways. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, you look back and you're like, oh, look how far I have come. Mm -hmm. So uh, in those in those quarterly goals, um, you're taking small steps, um, but you have some destination in mind. So that's that's something you want to uh, think about when you're writing your documentation. Is I have a, a, an end result in mind. Um, how do I get there? And like Alan mentioned earlier, um, the an end goal is often times automation. So uh, a, a, a great starting point to that is writing a good process in the first place. Uh, if you have a good process that you can run through these steps pretty easily, but it takes some manual work, maybe there's some steps in there that we can automate. And then yeah. the next time around, I only have to do two of those five steps and everything else is just working on its own. But if you know your process, it'll make that a lot easier. Uh, process is key. We, uh, For our vScreening service, we recently switched to a different software platform, got away from our ticketing platform and moved to something mission built for this. A and the folks who, who sold us the software were, were amazed because we had adopted the software in two days flat. Uh, and, and we didn't realize what was so special about this. And it was simply that we had a written process that we've been following already. So now we're like, okay, this is our process. How do you make your software do it? Okay, this one, this one, change this piece. All right, we're good. Like, okay, that was easy. Uh, the process made all the difference and allowed us to do all sorts of automations very quickly once we had mastered the process in writing and followed manually for a while first. Mm -hmm. um, our next step in uh, goals is um, understanding that there are humans behind the goals that you set. Um, so SOPs behind metrics. So if you're setting a goal or some destination, uh, we want to understand the human element and understand that uh, it will take them time. They will have challenges, uh, plan in some contingency for some extra time just in case things don't go well. Um, thinking about this quarter, it's okay, we have, you know, uh, 12 weeks in a quarter, right? Not this quarter. At the end of the year, we might have 10 weeks and then, the, oh, there's some holidays. Okay, so we have even less time. And then, okay, maybe I need to plan in that, uh, say, I, I am doing a discovery and something goes wrong in my initial action plan, okay, I might be set back a week or two. Um, those are the things we wanna plan for and think about ahead uh, ahead of time and, and not say, okay, we're gonna cram 12 weeks of work into eight weeks. <laughs> so you have to think about that and, and, and uh, accurately plan out. And that's part of your predict superpower is, is thinking ahead about how, lo how long these things are gonna take. Yeah, I, I imagine the number of times we, we set a goal uh, and then we suddenly become surprised that oh there's christmas holidays and vacations how could we have possibly predicted that uh well it does happen every year we've experienced it before so we should plan ahead uh and and veronica i don't know if we can throw up the uh six leadership superpowers link uh you mentioned the, our, our superpower we do teach uh there are six leadership superpowers uh predict being one of those uh and so there's more information we'll throw up here in a moment on how that works and uh, if you want to find out more. Uh, certainly. Um, something that helped me with with uh, this and understanding our, our core values is, is the fact that uh, process is my superpower. So I can think about things uh, from A to Z. Um, maybe not so much uh, planning ahead or simplifying, but um, at least I know the process part. So that's good. <laughs> well, we picked the right guy for this webinar. That's true. <laughs> Um, same thing with, uh, if, if you're setting a goal for your uh, documentation, if you're setting a goal for your service teams, um, in relation to KPIs or, um, in the, in the, in the, um, for quarterly goals, those are more like, uh, KPIs where you, you have a, a time-driven, um, uh, uh, measurement of, uh, your result. So, um, you know where you're going and you know how you're, uh, you're planning how to get there. Um. But understand that there's there's people behind those metrics, and if you're 
giving someone, especially when it comes to KPIs, if you're giving someone, hey, this number represents your performance on your job, give them the the purpose, the why behind that. Give them an SOP related to that gauge or that report that they're monitoring to say, um, if this number is bad, go do this and empower them to, to have an effect on that result. Um, and that goes with your goals as well. It, once they complete that task, they know that they have completed that goals and they've helped the whole company move forward and not just themselves for their personal KPIs or their team KPIs. So you've used that word a lot, KPIs. What is that? So a key performance indicator, and we like to say a key indicator of performance, because those will be the ones that are most important to that individual or team. And when it comes to quarterly goals, it's usually one person holding that goal and being accountable for it. And how does that vary from a KPR again? A KPR is, um, it's usually, it's like a quarterly goal, but it's not usually time driven. You just have a result in mind and you're headed towards it. Uh, we like the quarterly goals uh, being focused around a time frame because they say it has to be done by this time. And it, it makes you uh, a lot more motivated to, to get that because you don't want to miss your quarterly goals. And uh, just to, to weigh in, you mentioned the, uh, when we have a quarterly goal, because we always expect things to happen, right? We, we can predict that something is going to get in our way, even if we don't know what. Mm -hmm. you know, this, type, this time we know it's Christmas, American Thanksgiving for those in the U.S. Um, I always say that, you know, even though a quarter could have up to 13 weeks in it, uh, create a 10-week action plan. Uh, that gives you three weeks of slippage if you need it, or three weeks to relax if you get it done ahead of time. That's always a good feeling. <laughs> yeah, uh, we've had a uh, last quarter. We had a couple of those. Where we, as you know, as we hit month three, we started knocking off quarterly goals and, and allowed us to focus mm -hmm. on the ones that were harder to get accomplished. True, and and also, um, if you're meeting in a team setting, multiple people have uh, quarterly goals that they're trying to meet. Um, you might finish theirs or, or help them finish theirs because yours are all done. Um, so help help your team out there. Don't let them fail. Very good. Um. The next one, this is our, our bonus tip, is um, moving the goalpost uh, when needed. And, and and this is this is to say we're setting a goal and we're going to work towards it. But if we meet this goal, uh, do we need to move it or maintain it? So we want to understand what the, the goal's purpose is, whether it's a metric to just tell us this is how we're doing generally, or it's a KPI saying this is important for our team and it will directly affect uh, our performance for our clients um, and for meeting our goals in the future. So if it's a, a KPI that we want to maintain then to meet our goal, then perfect. We want to keep uh, maintaining that throughout the entire quarter, throughout the entire year. Um, if it's a metric that we keep meeting and it's just telling this, this is how we're, how we're doing, we might want to uh, increase that a little bit or, or decrease it depending on which direction is good uh, and, and say, we can do better and we can strive for better. And we've seen that if, you continually meet some metric or, or KPI, you might be able to push it up a, a little higher or lower than you think. And then it will force you to take action to, to uh, you know, improve your process to say, what can we do to get to this new goal? And it will motivate you and your team to, to uh, move towards that. So we've been asked this question before, uh, and I've certainly seen some cautionary tales. Is there a time to stop improving something? I, I, I can think of, I have a client who has really good resolution time in their help desk. They're hovering it at one hour and, and the owner's like, I want more, I want more. And I, I have this hesitation, like, okay, if, if we do more, how much effort, how much pushing, how much improvement do we have to make to get a little bit more? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I, I, I've, I was thinking that, thinking that as well. I, I have seen some things where um, I'm starting with newer clients and we have a baseline and then we want to work towards some metric. But once we get there, now what do we do? So I, I think the the it, you don't have great leaps and bounds, but now you're maintaining a standard. And uh, maintaining your standards is something that your clients feel. You improve your customer service. Uh, they understand that you are doing well for them. And that's usually what our goals are, are centered around. Um, but if, if someone is meeting their goals, they're doing a good job at, like, they're doing their job, essentially. <laughs> so uh, we don't need to constantly improve those. There might be improvements to the um, process or to that team, 
or maybe it's to say uh, we're meeting our goals. We can grow. Uh, it's it's not it's it's not hard to meet our goals right now. So maybe we can go out there and sell some more. That's kind of what I'm seeing when when uh, it's if we can consistently meet something. And I'm not trying to derail a team by like just suddenly onboarding new clients, but it it does tell me that uh, they can handle the workload and they're they're doing well. I, I, you know, there's probably a, a parable here or a, a lesson in our, our marketing. Uh, I don't mind spending, you know, dozens and dozens of hours working on some sort of marketing system. Uh, but my expectation is at some point we get this into autopilot. Like the first time we launched the IT Doug webinar series, you know, it was a lot of effort getting the first one. And I'm like, okay, how do we make this a little easier the second time? And we're we're obviously still adding new tools, like we're using StreamYard to stream this live, and we're trying to use Prezi for the presentation, and we're finding new obstacles all the time to make to, to, to work on and make better and continuously improve. But we're doing it, and the idea is that you know what might have taken us 40 hours in a month to prepare begins to take 30, and then 20, and then it gets into kind of an automated cycle. Not that we don't keep improving it every time we touch it, but the effort and the reward level changes and allows us to focus on other things we can go improve now. Mm -hmm. Yep, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I was trying to think of it in the terms of uh, uh, like a help desk, um, but <laughs> that makes sense as well. Um, let's see, what else do I want to talk about around the QBAs? Um, uh, there's one off the wall question on here that we should answer, which is, uh, are we related? <laughs> we are not related. I got asked recently if I was your brother, um so <laughs> tell me the time you're asked if you're my child yeah that's true <laughs> <laughs> how old do you think i am i have i have a little bit of gray in here I'm, I'm, <laughs> i have uh years in it and i have the gray to prove it i, I just it's not you know so pronounced yet <laughs> um no we're not related um unfortunately um we did find out that i am the tallest so uh... yeah, you almost lost his job that day <laughs> <laughs> so yeah <laughs> um i'm usually standing in the back of photos so <laughs> very good um, so um before before i started this i uh, asked our team um and this isn't necessarily one of our slides, just a great conversation piece here. Um, I asked our team what uh, continuous improvement meant to them. Um, so I have a, a couple excerpts here. Um, so first I'll uh, start with you, Alan. I'm going to repeat back to you what you said <laughs> and, and what I got from it. Um, Alan said, what continuous improvement means to me is that in anything we do, even the things that are working well, I'm looking for incremental improvements, whether it's to be more efficient or more effective, more automated, some, make something easier, or how, how can I improve everything that I touch? Um, and and it, you taught me this early on when I started, uh, is that what the client is asking for when they're when they're they have some type of need or um, submit a, a service ticket, see if we can go just like one step beyond that. They're asking for this. Can we give them? Can we deliver just a little bit more? Um, can can we make it easier for them in some way? Um, and that's that's always what I wanted to do when I was a service manager for my technicians. I wanted to make it easier for them to do their job. So if it took them less clicks, less time to get to something, they knew how to find things. Uh, just make it easier for them to do things. Sometimes I would uh, let just let them ask me questions and uh, about a process. And if I could get get them there faster with less clicks, I would try to teach them how to do it themselves. I love um, counting clicks. <laughs> yep, that's the process in me. <laughs> um, so I thought that was really cool. Um, and and it, I, I see it obviously. Uh, all the time here because uh, it's part of our core values and um, we work it into to everything that we do. So just making those just a little bit better each time um, really, uh, really comes through a lot. And, and our onboarding uh, <laughs> process is a really good example. Um, we, we did it a whole bunch of times and then we had a new audience member that said, oh, what do I do here? And we were like, ah, oh, we forgot this like transition moment where it transitions from one person to another. And that's what happens when uh, a process moves between departments even, is that you have to say, stop here and then give this to this person. <laughs> or, or in our case, you suddenly have departments you didn't have before. Exactly. <laughs> uh, 
That's what happens when you grow <laughs> by 50%. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Adam, you might be covering this next, and I'm curious how uh, our core values actually are written compared to uh, what our thoughts were on it. Um, uh, obviously, we have a, the, the chance to review our, our, our quarterly goals um, every quarter, or not our quarterly goals, our, um, our uh, core values uh, every quarter. So I, I, I think they're written pretty well and we, and we adhere to them. Um, I, I, I think we keep asking, hey, what does this mean to you each quarter? And you get like a little bit more every time and mm -hmm. it, we refine it and you get like new things. This is what I learned last quarter according to this core value. Um, so uh, like uh, like I was talking about earlier, like like uh, Brooks takeaway this quarter, this past quarter was knowledge and confidence, like giving people the knowledge and the confidence when it comes to documentation and process and um, anything related to what they're doing with their teams. Are they going in the right direction? Um, just being like, hey, we have seen another MSP do what you're doing. You're doing a good job. You're on track. Um, that gives them confidence. They know that they're doing the right thing and they're moving on. That was uh, one of Brooke's takeaways. Let me see if I can uh, find what she said. So while you're pulling that up, I will just read uh, our core value as it's currently stated, which we might continue to refine and improve. Um, continuous improvement. We want to keep getting better and doing better by enabling the same for our clients. We want all stakeholders to grow personally, financially, their knowledge, and their confidence. Uh, we wanted to specify a lot of things in this core value because we don't always think about those things when we say continuous improvement. We, we're stuck thinking about processes mm -hmm. or about career advancement or whatever that, that personal thing is to you uh, that you want to improve. And we're just trying to remind everybody that everybody's involved in the process and it's in all areas. Uh, absolutely. Um, all stakeholders. So that's uh, everybody in your, your company from the, the bottom to the top are a part of their success. And you um, have to empower them and, and to make them feel that they're a part of it and, and give them that, uh, that confidence when they're working in uh, their day to day. They know that they're impacting the the overall performance of the company in some way, and they know the like performance in their area of the company will impact things and how, and then how they can go make change to improve those things. Um, I was I was listening to something earlier in the week um, uh, from Jordan Peterson, and he was talking about like walled cities, um, in and in terms of you know you the, you've heard like people being confined in like a walled garden, but a walled city is functioning and it's working. Um, it, you're in your routine, so you feel comfortable in your routine. And he was saying, take solitude in that, because if you're working in your routine, then you can be free to innovate and imagine and, and start building things outside of it because you're comfortable where you are. Uh, so saying it wasn't necessarily a bad thing, uh, and, but do get outside of it every once in a while. <laughs> but he was saying, if you're working in your routine day to day, um, it will empower you to to think about the process and say, okay, I've done this process four or five times now. Um, we could probably combine these two lines, make this easier, maybe hand this off to someone, automate this part. Um, go through your routine and see how you can improve it. Uh, being aware of the routine is a big piece of that, right? Not just, not just crushing tickets as a technician. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. e even in IT documentation, I, one little thing Adam said, which was just triggered a thought for me is, Adam, you're reading stuff that might not have anything to do with, you know, Eureka process or IT or, or management. Um, and that's a, that helps your documentation too, is seeing what other people are doing, not just in uh, the way you document things, but how is a, a medical practice documenting their things? Mm -hmm. um, you know, what are just other concepts that are even unrelated or you thought were unrelated to the mm -hmm. IT documentation mm -hmm. uh, and, that can help you in, improve your life and, and everything you touch. Mm -hmm. That's what's great about uh, working with our clients. And, and um, they are, all come from different industries, even though we're working together in a very similar niche for in, for IT MSPs. Um, they all have, might have come from other industries, especially if they're, they're managers. They come from the auto industry. That you know they they've come from the medical industry, maybe even hospitality. Um, so they have 
similar ways of doing the same thing, and they might call it something different. So I was writing a, a technical SOP about uh, entering ticket notes, and uh, one of our clients was like, oh, this is SOAP. And I was like, no, these are ticket notes. And he's like, no, 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 it, it's SOAP, as in like, you know, these are the what this acronym mean, means to me. And I was like, oh, okay. So what I what I had burned into my head for how to write ticket notes, uh, he had something else in mind. So that was pretty interesting. I mean, we are uh, uh, fortunate and it's almost a self-fulfilling prophecy for doing what we do. We meet with so many clients and they're teaching us too. <laughs> and we're able, we're able to just cross pollinate with everybody to say, this is working for this person uh, and, and helping expose people to other ways to improve. Absolutely. Um, let's see. I'm reading uh, Veronica's excerpt here, and she's probably screaming internally. Um, but um, she, hey, she was... can always pull, put herself up on video and give it live if she prefers. <laughs> That's true. Um, uh, I think the, the continuous improvement aspect here for, for Veronica is um, she was building that routine, making sure she covered her bases um, so that she could build on top of that. So she's laying a good foundation for building on top of, of her existing day-to-day uh, -day routine and making sure she's focusing on, on different areas of her life to, to make sure she's showing up every day and she's good to go. Um, this is a part of like, templatizing essentially is, is uh, I repeat this process every day. This is a, a morning routine that I've been trying to get into. Um, I've been waking up earlier and I'm trying to discover what my morning routine is. And it's something I've been wanting to do for a while and I just haven't. So I just started my, setting my alarm earlier and getting up and um, trying to get myself ready for the day. And, and so far it's, it's worked really well that I've just been getting up and getting prepared for the day and I have more energy, but I'm just building my process over time. Very good. Um, that's uh, most of my notes and presentation here. Um, we should, we do have some time for uh, just open conversation. Um, and then uh, I, I think you have uh, information about uh, events that are coming up. Um, but if anybody has any questions, um, anything that you want to add, we have time for that now. Yep, we are uh, streaming onto YouTube, LinkedIn, uh, our Facebook page, and IT Doug. Um, so if you have questions on this video, you may just comment below. Uh, various platforms have a few seconds delay, uh, so so bear with us as we go through that. Uh, while we're waiting for questions, and Veronica, Sri, over here in our green room, you are welcome to come up with conversations, anecdotes, or cool things you've seen regarding continuous improvement as well. Um, but let's go ahead and pull up the uh, slides that we have for our uh, what's coming next for IT Doug. It's a, I know it's a special uh, holiday season. Uh, we're based in the U.S., so we have the uh, Thanksgiving holiday uh, during our next normal presentation. So we've opted not to have our regularly scheduled uh, webinar for November. Similar, we, uh, Christmas falls about the same time uh, for the IT Doug webinar. So we weren't going to do that regularly scheduled one either going back to normal in January. But we thought what would be fun is uh, kind of in between. We've picked uh, Wednesday, December 15th at 2 p.m. I believe that's Eastern time. Uh, worldwide audience here, including our own team. Um, we're, we're just going to have a, a meet and greet, uh, no super structured agenda. We're going to do some fun games, uh, and we're going to have giveaways. Uh, so just have some fun, have some little excitement, anticipation, get to know each other, uh, who's posting on the group and answering questions. And, uh, maybe we're all from different places and we can ask about the weather cultures, uh, could be fun, uh, super low pressure. Uh, would love to have you there. And then we'll, we'll be back into our normal schedule come January where Veronica and Sri have already uh, prepared a couple of guest speakers and some cool content uh, throughout the first quarter already. Oh yeah, I I'm jealous you. because uh, <laughs> for, the, for those that don't know, I've been, I'm an, a, an American US citizen. I've been living in Canada for the last few years. So I'm in, a, in the process of applying for permanent resident status. Combine that with uh, COVID restrictions and travel on the international borders. I can't go to IT Nation Connect this year, but the rest of the team can. So I'm super stoked to see what they uh, what they achieve and what they learn and who they connect with at IT Nation. So if you are headed to Orlando, November 10th through 12th, uh, Adam, Veronica, and Brooke uh, should all be there. 
Uh, they'll be roaming the halls, attending classes. Uh, we have a couple of uh, just meetups planned where if you, if you want to say hi, uh, would love to see you there. Uh, so look for them. Feel free to email us, eureka at eurekaprocess.com uh, if you uh, want to make sure we connect with you. Uh, you can also, uh, can you register for IT Nation meetups at, at the slash events as well? Ah, so a couple of meetups we do have at IT Nation, you can get to at eurekaprocess.com slash events. Uh, it's also the same place you can register for IT Dog on January 26th, uh, where we're going to have a special guest, Tenacity Cloud, there. Uh, and as usual, when we have vendors on board, we're going to try to prevent all the selling aspects that we can uh, and talk about cool stuff and cool perspectives regarding documentation and process uh, that those types of vendors can bring to the table with us. Did I miss any announcements? Uh, no, I don't think so. I'm excited for that uh, meet and greet. We did that in our community and it was pretty fun. It would be cool to do it here uh, with everybody that shows up to our IT dig. Absolutely. I'm still jealous about not going to IT Nation. <laughs> We will uh, we'll make sure to have fun with it for you. <laughs> I mean, I, I actually, uh, Brooke and I selected this jacket to wear to a conference uh, and it arrived just before COVID shut everything down. Uh, so now this is my webinar jacket. Uh, until go. next time I can wear it to a conference. Still getting used out of it. <laughs> hey, but my Halloween costume is selected for the year already. I'm wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Does it, what do you think it'll uh, scare the kids in your neighborhood? <laughs> <laughs> well, at least they can see where the candy thief is at. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, very fun. Um, I don't think we have any other questions. Veronica, Sri, uh, who are in our, our, our green room, and I can see them. You guys want to uh, throw some cool stuff? I really do want to pick on you guys. I know I'm putting you on the spot. I apologize. Uh, Sri's been with us for just a few months now. I would be curious. Sri, some sort of example of how you've seen continuous improvement uh, done at Eureka Process. If you're willing to come on, I don't see you shaking your head or vomiting, so that's good. Oh, how convenient time for internet issues. Hello. Hello. I think I should be loud and clear now. Yep. All good. Um, thank you for putting me on the spot. You're welcome. <laughs> Veronica's uh, next. You know, I, I think, it, you know, I've, acro across my, uh, the few companies I've been with uh, in my career, I've definitely seen companies that talk about values, but, you know, it's, it's just really something that goes on paper, you know. Um, but I, I do feel that as a team, um, uh, Eureka process definitely inculcates uh, the continuous improvement value. Um, and um, I think that's one of the elements that has made me feel very welcome as a newbie to the team as well. Um, I definitely see that approach taken um, in helping me understand this field, which is very new to me, and appreciating the fact that, um, you know, I, apart from my work life, I also have a school life. And um, I, I do see that's a very integral part of the team. Yeah. Uh, and have you seen any uh, specific examples of continuous improvement and, and any, any stories that might can help others? So my role as community manager role revolves, um, one of the things that revolves around is the Eureka community website. And, you know, where it is at now as uh, a repository of knowledge um, can work. Um, it has been working for a while, but I think we've chosen not to let it stay there. Uh, it could be better. It can be better. And the decision-making process for that was that. I mean, it was almost like this is a no-brainer. We It needs to keep growing. And that was, that was the decision. The decision wasn't let's change it to a new form. You know, the decision was very long-term. It was very much with uh, sustainability uh, factor in mind. So it was very much, let's see what its next evolving form can be. Uh, and that to me is very much continuous improvement. So yeah, so there's never any hesitation from anybody to let's improve yep. this thing. Yeah. Uh, what is the uh, the quote, uh, good is the enemy of great? Yeah, uh, when we... I'm writing documentation, it's um, 
you know, uh, perfect is the enemy of me actually starting. So <laughs> I just start writing and then it could be good and then I can improve it later and make it better. <laughs> you know, you know, the reason we think that so strongly might be because of how strongly we believe in continuous improvement, hmm. creating a process, creating a document that's hard. But once it's there, uh, even if it's just a header or a couple of bullet points, Adam, as you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. all right, now we have something we can improve continuously. We don't have to aim for perfection. Mm -hmm. You know, fix a spelling mistake this time, you know, next time add a step, the third time realize you can skip a step. Uh, just one thing at a time. Very mm -hmm. good. Um, Veronica, do you want to uh, take Sri's moment in the spotlight? <laughs> and uh, any examples you have of continuous improvement you've seen? Um, well, what I wanted to say was that as part of our core value, my favorite aspect of our definition is that it is not focused only in business. We want to take that outside of our outside and into our lives. And um, I've done that in the past just for myself, just to make sure this is what Adam was explaining earlier, just to make sure I'm on the right track, um, especially if I seem or I feel that I'm off track. I just check in with these five things and I keep it five. So I have it on my on my hands and I say, you know, am I doing well physically, financially, emotionally, uh, psychologically? and spiritually is the last one so i just have that always on my mind um and not that i um always have to be doing amazing in any of them but if i'm not i know what to do to to move forward even just a little bit right because uh, the whole concept of continuous improvement has nothing to do with where you are except for that you are there right it, it can be bad it can be good it can be great uh but how do we make it just a little bit better? I mean, even if we're having a bad day, a bad process, bad documentation. Uh, well, one, if you have bad, that means you have something that's probably a, a heck of a start, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, this, let's just make it better. And when next week you look at your document and it's slightly less bad, okay, that's improvement. And, and that can be celebrated. That's why it's a core value because I'm okay, even with a bad document or a bad process, because uh, I know we're improving it and we live that. And Veronica, you mentioned the personal life too. It's really hard to be one way at work and be a different way personally. We might do different things, but it's hard to be two different things. So it, uh, this today's webinar is not about core values specifically. It's about continuous improvement. Uh, but it's just an example of how you know we're, we're, we're trying to be human beings that are a certain way versus just do this at work, please. Mm -hmm. Uh, personally is is uh, personal improvement is in our core value um and uh, alan you have a great story about this that's your personal positive today um oh, what wow. is um you know how has that affected you o over time okay um this will be the last statement we can make then we have to wrap up that's uh, very good <laughs> and I'll, I'll try to keep it brief maybe this is a separate webinar later um so i was listening to a friend complain recently you know Work is tough. I need more work. I'm like, okay, you really shouldn't do both those things at the same time. Um, and I, I look around and I go, man, you know, my life is actually really good. I have a team that I love. Business is growing. I love working with my clients. Um, uh, and, you know, I started stumbling upon words we've all heard, heard like abundance mindset, positivity, uh, spirit of thankfulness. Um, you know, Thanksgiving was just in uh, Canada a few weeks ago, and it will be in the States in, in a few weeks as well. Um and I realized that the reason these things are good for me, the reason, I want to say this again, the reason I have good material things, friendships, uh, you know, I love my new bicycle that I got, a uh, cool computer, great, great business, uh, I can pay my bills, is because we start every meeting we have with a positive start. We give a personal positive. Hey, I'm thankful for this. I had this experience. It was wonderful. I had this bad thing happen, but I learned this thing from it. Um, we find a positive for every meeting. And I facilitate three to seven meetings a day, five days a week that I have to give a personal positive for. And I have to hear a personal positive from everybody else in every one of those meetings as well. And the amount of positivity that surrounds me because of that and the, and the way I view things and the way I act because I hear those things constantly reinforced to me creates real material wealth. And wealth doesn't have to be just money, but it's real material wealth, whether it's the uh, 
Veronica, I, I'm not going to get the list right, but you said the five things, you know, mental, physical, spiritual, uh, financial, and social, maybe. Uh, maybe I got those right. Uh, it, it does start with the positive mindset. And I think continuous improvement uh, is a big root of that personal mindset, because if things can continuously improve, can't be that bad. So that's this month's webinar. I hope to see you guys uh, next month. Nope, month and a half from now uh, at the meet and greet for IT Doug. Mm -hmm. Adam, thank you so much for pulling this together and bringing this information here. Yeah, this is fun. <laughs> uh, well, we, we do check all of our social medias pretty often. So if you guys want to start a conversation in your favorite, uh, go for it. Uh, if anybody wants to um, talk to the guy who has our handle on Twitter, so we don't have to put the underscore in there, let me know. <laughs> um, and uh, we'll see you in IT, Doug, in the comment section, I'm sure. <laughs> Thanks for Thanks coming, everybody. everybody.